Today's morning brief is on, you guessed it, artificial intelligence. The title, the market's obsession with AI is not the right magnitude. Yahoo Finance's Miles Udlin writes, with a seemingly endless discussion of artificial intelligence and its potential across industries, the level of conversation happening about it is not right. Either we're talking about it way too much or way too little. Here's what some of our guests had to say on the space, the artificial intelligence space, this week, starting with Builder.ai, which just got a big investment from OpenAI backer Microsoft. Here's CEO Sachin Duggal. You know, when we think about what's happening in the world at large, and, and this is, you know, before ChatGPT and, and what we're seeing with OpenAI, we've seen a rapid push towards digital transformation, um, whether it's a small business, it's entrepreneurs that are trying to build ideas and they need to be digitally native. Um, and uh, and companies like ours are, are, are using AI to, to accelerate the productivity for them to get to that endpoint, right? So they don't have to become software experts. They can simply talk about their idea we can recommend the right set of features depending on which region in the world they're in, what kind of features they're building. Broadly speaking, I think where you're starting to see this play out into everyday life is productivity applications. Um, you, you think about things like Copilot. Um, they're um, going to help us do a lot more with a lot less. Um, and that means that if we think about the aggregate amount of demand for work that even comes into a startup like Builder uh, and the ag aggregate amount of supply we have, whether it's our expert network or it's our own teams doing internal work, um, this actually helps us level the playing field and, and, and brings back some balance for, for, for a lot of folks. And education tech group Duolingo is no stranger to the technology. CFO Matt Scarupa joined us after its first quarter earnings beat expectations. The business has been outspoken on how AI can help scale education. AI for us is a, is a, a really integrated experience. So for a long time, users um, have told us that they wanted to interact with our product. And what AI does is it's a really quick or the generative AI is a really quick response mechanism. So we're able to integrate much more tutor-like um, conversational um, response times into our product. So it's just, it's a really natural fit for us. And it's something that in our early testing uh, of this new tier, we, we do see demand for, so we're excited about it. How big it can go, we're not sure yet. I mean, it's early days, so we're gonna keep uh, testing and rolling it out um, over the course of the rest of the year, but we're very excited about it. Ohio's finest also getting into the space. Wendy's making a big push and integrating AI into its all important drive throughs CEO Todd Penagor caught up on its plans here on Yahoo Finance. So what you're gonna to see today is um, basically just taking out the traditional order taker. You won't even know that uh, that it's AI uh, taking your order, um, but you'll be talking to uh, the voice of Wendy's, uh, be it a consistent voice. It may upsell you along the way today. Todd, is it your uh, voice? The is, it, is it your voice? It's not my okay, voice. Okay, just one no, God help us, uh, Brian. But um, no, we'll have a, a consistent voice out there. But what we'll have on the digital menu boards is a confirmation. So you know that your order was taken right. You'll get to see it real time. Um, and then ultimately, we'll get you through the uh, the restaurant very quick. So when you think about different languages, different dialects, we'll be able to quickly make sure that nothing gets lost in translation, both from a customer uh, or an employee perspective. But over time, you know, as you start to think about how do you take a digital menu board? How do you make it a smarter digital menu board? How do you connect um, you know, the voice AI, the digital menu board, uh, ultimately to our loyalty program? You know, how do we make sure that we got a more personalized, custom, uh, customized menu to support what Brian wants when he comes to the restaurant? And how do we trade you up when you come into that restaurant in the future? Those are all opportunities, a little further off, obviously, um, but you got to start laying the pipework in the platforms today to really bring all of that to life. And next door, also jumping on the AI train, the company looking at ways that generative AI can enhance the way neighbors communicate with one another. CEO Sarah Fryer joined us yesterday to talk about it. Yeah, you just can't get left behind when these huge technology shifts happen. So you're right. Um, if you look at next door, we've held our operating expenses about flat for the last three quarters. But if you look at what's been going on effectively under the hood, 
Um, we have been hiring up a big AI team. We started that investment back really in 2021, going into 2022. It's not just about generative AI, right? AI has been underpinning um, platforms like Nextdoor for, for many, many years now. We use that data to do things like a better notification, right? The right notification to the right neighbor at the right time brings them back to the platform. It's the way we personalize the news feed. So the things that work for me may not work for you, Brian, but we try to make sure your feed is personalized for you. So we do have to keep investing here. We have to stay really out in front. And we wanted to move fast on the generative AI front because we wanted to let anyone, any neighbor in the world that's on next door gets to see what this technology is like, gets to benefit from it. And we think that's an important part of really democratizing um, a whole new wave of technology. So everyone seems to have an opinion on the AI space these days, from companies to policymakers and academics. We caught up with Danny Blanchlauer who is the former Bank of England policymaker and now economics professor at Dartmouth College. He didn't really mince his words. The Luddites thought that technology was going to be job destroying. But if you look back over, let's say, the last 25 years, actually lots of new jobs have been created around technology. You know, when you have your dishwasher repair, the plumber doesn't come. The computer guy comes to, to sort of impact, to, 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 to deal with the computer that's in every one of your Machines. I mean, yesterday my my coffee maker is blocked, and I got a message on my phone saying there's a problem with your coffee maker. I think that's the first thing. I think mean, job. This is job generating. It's just job different. And I think, in a sense, your question is something I've thought about endlessly. But if you think, let's say, I was to go back each ten year period, and you say to me, so what do you think's coming? What are the new jobs over the next decade going to look like? And the answer is, I'd have had it wrong. <laughs> It would have been very hard to work out that be an Apple store and I'd be talking to Yahoo Finance on my Zoom. Um, um, so I think the answer is it's hard to know, but I think there's change, big changes coming. Obviously, we're seeing um, um, this technology impact. I think Zoom is a big deal. And we're seeing evidence that the inner city is in decline. So if you look at things like you know, f f beeps of phones in downtown, in San Francisco, it's about 25% of what it was. In Boston, it's 50%. The character of working has changed, but jobs have changed, um, uh, and, and we're just seeing we're seeing rapid change around this technology. Um, I, 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 in many senses, it may well be job enhancing, not just job destroying. I love that Danny got a message on his phone that his coffee maker was not operational. Um, and I, and I also liked um, the point that our Miles Odlin made in the morning brief is that this is either going to be you know, a blockchain technology, a metaverse, a, yeah. something that was extremely discussed that was not world changing, or we're actually not taking talking about it enough because even more than those technologies, at least in our minds and in theory, this has the more, a bigger potential to change uh, many, many, many different businesses and the way we sort of conduct our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, and we don't really know yet. We don't know yet. However, what we do know is that if there were investors out there trying to get ahead of the artificial intelligence trade and try to get kind of a sense of where some of the totem pole elements start to come together around the artificial intelligence, generative artificial intelligence specifically here, you kind of got that through the earnings calls that took place. And I think back to the Meta Platform's earnings call where Mark Zuckerberg, in his very monotone way, did deliver something that was extremely valuable, I think, for investors who are trying to understand where the parts of generative AI are to potentially invest in. And I, I kind of broke it down into this acronym, AMC, and at the top of it, you have the applications. In the middle, you've got the models, those language learning models that the applications are built on top of. And then at the bottom of that, the foundation of that entire generative AI house, if you will, is the chips. And the chips that we've heard, uh, or at least the kind of data center or semiconductor plays that we've heard so far, a lot of companies point, pointing right now back to NVIDIA and mm -hmm. how much they're leveraging or intend to leverage the DGX cloud, which we had heard about two or, or an earnings call ago for NVIDIA as well. And so kind of thinking about it within that acronym, I think a lot of the conversation from an investment standpoint is, well, it seems like chips are really going to be the core focus of this and could be a near-term and long-term kind of leader in terms of where 
the, the longer return to value for shareholders would be in the generative AI lens. I mean, it's also interesting how many different other companies are using ChatGPT specifically. I mean, Open um, Door, Next Door, yeah. Next Door, for example, is using ChatGPT mm -hmm. as a foundational product for its AI offering. So then that goes back to OpenAI, mm -hmm. which goes back to Microsoft. So th that also is, is something that investors are clearly thinking about. Yeah, and even translation too. Brian Chesky told us from Airbnb's perspective, they want to just be able to run simple language translation. That's yeah. one of the lower hanging fruits. There's, that there's does it already. Right, exactly. If you message yeah. your, your person and they don't speak English or don't speak whatever, it translates.